getting back behind the wheel of the tractor and in the field and smelling the dirt and the beets and everything, it's, it's been a good time. The long hours get to you, but I mean, with good people around, anything can get done. You learn a lot of stuff, it's what I like about beet harvest. The action and all the lights and, and the communication and the, I, I, I like the pace and, and the speed of, of beet harvest. Ever since you put the first seed in the ground, uh, you know, the race is on. There's just so many challenges. The, whether the people are going to show up, whether the equipment's going to work properly, the weather, Mother Nature is going to rule like she always does. You're invested. There's no touching the water with your toe. You're jumping into your neck. So each morning we get together, uh, the guys are all coming into the office, punching in, coming in, grabbing a cup of coffee. What we do is we try to get them all on the same page. We try to get everybody to understand what fields we're digging, who's in what trucks. Just try to get all the bases covered with, with everybody, and then we head on out for the day. Joe, what truck was Joe in yesterday? Uh, he switched out into one. He'll be in nine this morning, the trail. Okay, we move fields. We're gonna move fields again today. We had a good day yesterday when we, the opening that we did yesterday and the moving around, we did good. It went pretty smooth, I thought. Okay, good job. Today, we're gonna be all hauling to Drayton. Okay, everybody's hauling to Drayton. Okay, let's go kick some ass, goodbye. Drive safely. Do it right, fellas, be the best.
So Gaditis Family Farm, uh, AKA the Sugar Beet Mafia, we are four independent farms. We got John Gaditis Farm, we got Jay Gaditis Farm, we got Lee Gaditis Farm, we got Andy Gaditis Farm. It's my dad and me and my two brothers. And we're each financially independent. We work like one big uh, common farm. We grow corn, we grow soybeans, we grow pinto beans, we grow black beans, we grow wheat. We're a fast paced, we're a modern uh, row crop farm specializing in sugar beets. Our family's been here in the Red River Valley since uh, I think it's 1886. My great grandfather bought this farm that I live on in 1911. My great grandfather never did farm. My grandfather did farm, Grandpa Ed. He farmed until uh, I think he was 60 years old, 1971, I believe it was, that uh, he decided to retire. He said, here, John and Jim, you guys, you know, you're go-getters, you'll do more with it than I will at my age, so here you have it, see what you can do with it. And uh, both my dad and my uncle uh, did well, had a good start, did well, and uh, got things going pretty good here for us. We call ourselves a sugar beet farm because that's where we make our money, that's what our thing is, that's where our bread and butter is, it's in sugar beets. This year, 2022, we had uh, just about half of our acres planted into sugar beets. The uh, sugar that we grow is from Merit and Crystal, Sugar Company, it's a closed cooperative. You have to own your stock in order to grow your beets. In 2022, uh, one share of stock would allow you to grow 0.83 acres of beets. So 100 shares to get you 83 acres. Those shares are trading roughly at $4,200 a share. So it's quite a big uh, investment in uh, sugar beet stock if you want to play the game. Number changing when we get into harvest, the, the first operation that we're going to do in harvest is we're going to come in with the defoliator. And so the defoliator is a, essentially a, a flail mower that's pulled behind the tractor and it removes the leaves down to the crown of the beet and deposits the leaves on a pile in between the rows. That's all I do is row the beet. It's my leavening here. Eleventh year. Yeah, the first year was 2011. Yeah, and you haven't been killed in the Then I missed in 2015. Therapy. Behind that comes the, the beet harvester. The harvester has a set of cambered and tapered wheels. They're angled. To, to where they both turn. As they turn, they get closer in the back and they pinch the beet. It rolls up and out. As it rolls up, the beet, the, the wheels open up wider. So as the paddle shaft beats the beat out of the out of the lifting wheel it puts it back onto the header of the uh, harvester and it lands on a set of rollers and then the beat will get in between and it'll just move them over to the center and then start moving them towards the back as that happens it starts removing the dirt and it falls out through the bottom of the machine there and spreads out through the the width of the machine and as it's conveyed back it comes across a, a belted chain like a potato conveyor chain bring it straight back to the ferris wheel up and around the ferris wheel and onto the top apron belt which conveys it up into the little four ton hopper and then from there it'll go into the truck yep Call best use trucks or call helms or call birds or call somebody with triaxles or quad axle and buy five trucks and fill them up with the drivers we got. All right. Buy trucks, buy more trucks. We had had a, uh, a bunch of uh, hired trucks that were lined up to come. I think there was about 12 guys that said they were coming that ended up not coming. So at that point early in the harvest, uh, I said, well, we can't do this for three weeks with uh, 10 trucks short. You just do the, do the math on 10 trucks, how many loads they're going to miss over three weeks. Uh, that just adds uh, days on the backside, and, and sometimes the weather doesn't give you those days. So I told Jay, uh, or I, I called him, I said, hey, we better do something, and we better do it now. I mean, I'm sure probably 20, 20 trucks a day. I really wish I could help you, but I just can't. Yep, no problem. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything Nothing? Okay. I was looking at your website. It looked like you might have a half dozen or so. Well, they're gone. They are. All right. Well, thank you. On our farm for years, uh, Jay and I have split our roles and our duties. And, uh, if it, and the easiest way to say it, if it's, if it's to do with paperwork, my brother Jay does it. 
And if it's to do with dirt work, I do it. So it's that easy. If it's dirt work, it's me. If it's paperwork, it's Jay. This past year with, uh, um, you know, roughly 9,000 delivery cards to make sure they got into the right trucks on the right fields and to the right pilers. I basically just went out in the field with all those cars and I managed those cars and I handed them out. And on the backside, I'm, he I'm hearing all the chatter of the planning and, the, and everything else and giving my input where it's needed. And, and so that's what I did. Good How's it going out here? Hey, Jose. We work a lot. We can't go home ever. <laughs> <laughs> But Every time I send you guys home, you just spend money. That's why you yeah. save money. That's true. So this year, uh, we added to our operation, uh, uh, we bought three H&S 35-ton beat carts. So with the amount of fields that we ended up having this year, the amount of headlands we had to do, and the openings or strikes or landings, whatever you want to call them, uh, I would send those beat carts where before we would send trucks. Our old operation, we would go with the beet harvester, get the tank of the beet harvester full, we would stop, trucks would be behind, the beet harvester would then lift up, back up and back to the truck. We do it that way so the trucks are, are driving where the beets have been dug and they're on black dirt. Because remember this is the opening and now just 12 rows over either side it's it's the green beet leaves because the road the, the beets have not been road beated yet. It worked out excellent with the beet carts this year just for the openings themselves, the amount of openings we had, the, the amount of fields we had, it was an eye opener to, all right, this is where, for us, this year, this was the, 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 the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, that was the golden ticket for that, uh, for the help this year. This is my first year with the Gaditis. You have to be like on top of everything. It's a uh, pressure, it's stressful, but it's a good, good environment, good, uh, a good, good working, uh, like learning experience, especially with the semi. The, the proper uh, cycle of a truck, trucks get loaded with their beats, they go to the factory or they go to the outside piling site, uh, they dump their beats, uh, American Crystal, have, their pilers have the ability to clean the beets as they're being dumped because uh, they don't want the dirt in the pile, obviously. After the trucks dump their beets, uh, they then pull forward about 30 feet and there's a dirt chute there. Uh, the dirt chute gives our truck the dirt that came off of our beets after they dumped the load. Uh, trucks get back to the field and then every one of them has to dump their dirt, clean their box, scrape their end gate so the end gate closes properly. Um, with mechanical chains we have that close the end gates um, and then uh, then they're ready to reload for the, for the next uh, product going in. Well the safety poles are an uh, uh, excellent safety item to begin with. Uh, what they've taken away is the chains and the ropes uh, that uh, tractors and trucks and farmers would use to pull to free stuck equipment and uh, it's pretty much a rigid piece of iron uh, it's got the loop in the front of the truck and then the pogo stick, I'll call it on the tractor, has got a pin that goes up, locks into that, so then you're pulling iron on iron. 100% way safer, uh, way more efficient. Uh, nobody has to get in or, in or out of the tractor or the truck. Uh, you aren't slopping in the mud, you aren't slipping off the truck or the tractor after you walked out, hooked up your rope or your chain. It's just a complete safer way to uh, free stuck vehicles, which can happen a lot uh, during beet season. Because if it's if it's on the wet side, uh, as long as the lifters can go through the field, you're probably going to be digging beets. So, and there's been times where we've pulled every truck in and out of a field. Jay and Ben is the young diesel. I'm in the wet hell uh, Jeremy, uh, let me back up a little bit and get that front closer to me. Maybe I can empty out and I'll get to you. Can someone switch the uh, wall wagon's light on, please? Yeah, 10 4. Jake Johnson, once you're ready to go, I'll pull under this lift here and I'll empty out the hopper. Pull up and let me get out of the ditch. Pull up and let me get out of the ditch here. Who is on the drop and off Yeah, but that leads you to the northwest. 
They just see one driving the field. Yeah, on the north end of the field, you can get right on the dirt road. The north end of the field, for most of the way, you can get right up on the dirt road and go west. Then four. Thank you. Yeah, because the roads here where I'm at are getting pretty ugly. Yeah. Then four. The beat cars are going to have to load in the northwest corner. Somewhere over there. Somewhere over the northwest corner, the beat cards. Uh, just because it's soft here, we're technically right in a waterway here where all the water goes in the big rain, so. When we can, the beat cards will load in the northwest corner in the tile pump. Right over there. Thank you. You want me to move over there now? Ah, uh, when you're done. When you're done, we'll just try to contain them over there. My role uh, in beet harvest, I don't know, I'm almost the orchestrator of, of the whole circus. And and I say circus, everybody will laugh. At, once you throw those balls in the air, you there's a, you got to juggle everything and, and make sure none of them hit the ground. I'm going to have to figure out where the next strikeout's going to be so we can keep everything moving along. Nothing comes more to a standstill than it already is. Because if we're stopped, we're not digging. Not digging, we're not moving. Not moving, we're not getting done. Get loading now, everything's opened up, ready to rock. Cass, beyond Cass. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Danny's losing beats out the center, in the middle. Maybe a broken lifter wheel, or we need to put that center plate in. Terry, come on and get in the rows, Terry. Terry, be on. Copy that. Terry, get in your rows here behind this tractor four. It's over here. We have to be out in the field actively with fuel. That fuel trailer is out in the field with just about a thousand gallons in it. Um, we've got to get roughly 3,000 gallons into those tractors every day. If the tractors need fuel or dev or beat cars, lifters, rotor beaters, whatever, I just go fill them up or tell them where I'm at and they'll just come swing by and I'll fill them up and that's it. So blading the roads, every load that comes out, there's 16 wheels on an average truck that are gonna roll and bring dirt out onto the road and we're gonna cover up the gravel or we're gonna cover up the asphalt or the concrete. It just creates an unsafe, muddy condition. So we have to go back with our blade and we'll blade that. It's important to keep that road clean, not just for the neighbors, but for ourselves. If we get the mud on the road and then we get a small rain event, even just a small drizzle, our dirt becomes very slippery.
Grandma Wiley. <laughs> He's always in the way, isn't he? Uh, he's uh, everywhere. Yeah, he's a lot of people yeah. that understand. Hey, I can't How many years have you been with Jay and Lee? This is my third. Third? Yes. Yeah, it's my third year. They're really nice guys, you know. Party. So I started cooking with my mother-in-law, Susan. Uh, we started doing it as a way to go see the crew and so that, you know, during the days we were lonely so we could go see our husbands and the kids could come out and see their dads. So it started out with that, mainly grain harvest, and then um, we moved on to beets. So it is a big job. Uh, the other day I made seven pans of lasagna, I, which is like over 20 pounds of hamburger. So just browning hamburger takes hours. And then putting it all together, I tried to do a side dish and then a dessert with everything. Um, I've been doing this for I don't know how many years. I started out as a newlywed. I remember my first meal was uh, frozen lasagna from Sam's Club. And I bet you Lee almost died because his mom made everything from scratch. <laughs> And here I am like living in Grand Forks. I'm like, oh, I got to bring out something to the crew. And now everything's pretty much from scratch. The guys have favorites and they have requests. So that's really fun. I know they appreciate it. And I just, I appreciate their hard work, their time away from their families. Cause I know a lot of the guys who work for us are full-time guys and I know their families. I see their kids around and I know it's a sacrifice for them just like it is for our family too, so this is my way of being part of the farm and saying thanks. So one of my biggest concerns when I'm in the office waiting for everybody to roll back in is I just want to make sure everybody's home and safe. You know, look everybody in the eye and see, you know, how, how tired are they? Should they come to work tomorrow? Should they get some time off? And, uh, you know, if they're sick or coughing or 
or just under the weather, you know, take the time to notice those people and look at them, talk to them, say hello to everyone, and uh, pay attention to, to them because once again, without them, we're, we're not getting it done. We gotta have them. We, we, we can't do it without our help. So we're gonna move two, let's see, one, two, three. We're gonna move three rotobeaters and four lifters to Minnesota and the beat carts. And then we're gonna leave two rotobeaters and two lifters where we're digging. And there's only how, how many of the truck driver guys are here that are supposed to be here? Who's here that's not supposed to be here? Randy? Okay, otherwise there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight truck drivers, where's my eighth one? Okay, that's good, we want eight, eight trucks and you guys that are here are gonna stay in Hamilton. Eight trucks, two lifters going to Hamilton until we finish that out. Okay, and then the rest of the guys are coming at seven then they're gonna go straight to Minnesota to hopefully meet the equipment there. Danny, you leave this morning with the lifter. Kenny, you guys leave. Rooster, Craig, and JR, you guys can take the pickup and get up there and then, uh, see I'm picking up Andrea so we don't have to move her vehicle. And uh, who's the other one? Pedro. Pedro would be. Pedro's not here. Well, he'll be there. Roy and Jose, you wait for Pedro. What's what's trucks are starting this morning? Truck two. They're all up there. Truck three. Where? Six beside Oh, two, three, four, eight, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-four, and twenty-six. Okay, you guys are all going to Hamilton Quarter where we were before, last where we were last night. Okay, there's about thirty acres left. About four loads apiece, and then we'll be moving. Across the road, we're gonna go to Hanson West. What's going on? Moving them over to do the headland here. The little bell underneath? Yeah, 10 4. It just came off. It's still intact, it just came off the road. Alright, we'll come fix you up. Hop in, Eric, or grab two three quarter inch wrenches. Hi, right, Mark Cass. A little bit so I can fry it over. It's turning. It's turning. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Yep, thank you. Hanson East, Mainfield. Hanson East, Mainfield.
You quit now, you can't start till 11 o'clock or midnight. Well, yeah, you know, so what? What's the forecast tomorrow? Same as today. Shut it down. Be back at midnight. Well, that's what I say. After we get this opened up and I can go get McFarland's opened up now. Well, plenty of these guys can go home, man. Yeah, that's what I think. I'm sending everybody home except for Rooster, because you got to fix. You guys go do beans. We're coming back at midnight. We're gonna open up this and open up McFarland's. The rotor beaters are gonna beat all day. We're coming back at midnight. The piling sites have different heat policies. They can only store the beets to certain heat levels for long-term storage throughout the winter. Some pilers are 65 degree sites and some are 55 degree sites. What has happened is the temperature has reached above 55 degree root temperature of the beet. So they shut down non-ventilated, non-deep freeze pilers at the factory, which is four pilers out of nine. So now there's a huge line of trucks because everybody still wants to keep digging beets. And I've decided to stop digging beets because I don't want to wait in line. We, I'm only three miles from the factory, which is one of my closest hauls, and I'll be waiting for trucks, which is ridiculous. So my brother and I decided we're gonna shut down till midnight because the midnight run is usually a ghost town and it should be able to make us uh, maximize the hours and the time that we're close to the piler with a three mile haul. So hopefully we should get, I think we'll get triple the amount done uh, in the night starting at midnight than I would uh, trying to just bear with it through the night or through the day right now. So that's what we decided. Later in the season, we actually had to manage uh, frost shutdowns. The beets can have so much frost in them and still be stored, but once they get, the frost gets too deep in the beets, uh, the uh, American Crystal doesn't want to put those, uh, call them damaged beets, into long-term storage. Heat shut down, the beets get warm, too warm. Generally that evening, uh, you know, if the, if the weather will drop below uh, acceptable levels of heat, it'll cool down the beet fast enough and the beet doesn't really have to heal, it just has to cool down. In a frost shutdown, that can last for days and it did this year i think i remember we were shut down for two or three days later in the season uh, because we got such a severe frost i think it went down to 18 degrees penetrated the beets pretty good and then we had to let nice warm days thaw those beets out pull that frost line back out to make them uh, uh, healed and suitable for long-term storage figured since i had some time i better go see my son's game Maybe should go home and sleep, but well, kids things have to happen and it's uh, good to make an appearance and kids like to see dad there, so. Huh? What? Yeah, 10 4. Yeah, lifters turn in. Road beaters turn in. I got the road blocked here at the interstate. Fuel trailer, turn and go. Turn and go. JR, roll your lights back one quick, JR. You got all your field lights on you. You're blinding. There you go. Thank you. Now we can see your flashing. Yeah, if you drive, where's in the headline? Vision north. 21, Jeremy, hit boom boom. Load up boom boom. 21, go to the beat car coming at you. You just bob and weave your way back to the east side and get out of this mess here. The west side, I mean. 
Bob and weave your way, get to the west side. We started opening a new fields that hadn't been touched and we started in the dark, so we just had to make sure that everything flows as properly as possible and not get everybody all jammed up, stopping everybody, because that's what happens. They just get in the way of everybody and then nobody can move. Well, then we gotta erase our mistakes and start over again, so. But in a matter of about 10 minutes, it'll field should disappear pretty nicely because everything will be opened Wait. up and going smooth. What? The neighbor called. He said at first there was a bright light in the field, and then it looked like a bomb went off, and then the truck sprouted everywhere. <laughs> Who was it? Randy. <laughs> uh -huh. During beet harvest, when we're rolling and things are going hard, our, our labor bill is just under $73 a minute. Things are rolling and all that fuel is going and the, the fuel man calls, hey, there's gotta be a leak in your barrel because there's 4,000 gallons just disappeared. You know, we can hold 137,000 gallons of diesel fuel on the farm. And that sounds like a lot, but that's, if we start with that and we don't refill during harvest, we'll probably run out before we finish harvest. It's a lot of fuel, it's a lot of men, it's a lot of different attitudes, it's a lot of different personalities and uh, making sure that we get a group that can work together that has fun and, and is, isn't easy. And, I, and we're fortunate to have a, a good group. This year there was guys that, uh, you know, they walked out of here in eight weeks with $20,000. They, they made money. You know, our help is vital to our, to our farm. When, uh, if we can treat our help good, and that doesn't just mean paying them well, you know, that meal at the end of the day means a lot to them and a place to stay in our bunkhouse. You know, free room in the bunkhouse, that means a lot to them. I like working for Jay and Lee. They're real direct to the point. Got to have kind of thick skin, but any harvest time for any farmer, you got to have thick skin. I admire them because uh, they have a lot of work and I don't know how they manage with so much stuff. Good people, very good people to work for. Watching Lee fly through the field at 100 miles an hour is kind of fun to watch sometimes. It's pretty intensive, but how this outfit is able to keep such a big crew and keep them in line, I really don't know. Right? Lee's got something special. They both seem to be good bosses. You know, I like working for them. I could see coming back for them next year. They pay well, they take care of us, we have nice equipment and they, you know, they treat us well and, and uh, you can't ask for any, any employer better than what they have been to me over the years and I think everybody else has worked for them. I'm like part of the family, uh, they don't discriminate against anybody, we all work together I, and I can't believe it, I, we all as, as a group and I'm enjoying what I'm doing here. It's a great place to work. I, I, look forward to beet harvest, to harvest in general every year. I look forward to coming out here and, and spending as much time as I can. Oh, it's fun working here. I love it. I love what I do. Uh, Heidi Gedaitis, she does a very, very good job of, of making sure everybody gets fed. I went to high school with Jay and Lee. Like, I've known them my whole life. And I'm around farmers all the time, but I've never seen this side of them really you know so they should be very proud of themselves it's it's a very successful business we're in a John Deere 8410 gotcha so there's kind of a little bit of a story behind this tractor and uh, what exactly is that story uh, the story is that it belonged to me Francis Kilhusky, better known as Rooster. Uh, when I was farming and at the, my auction sale when I retired, John Gladys bought the tractor from at the auction and he said this is going to be strictly a roller beater tractor. So this fall when I hired on with them to roller beat, I told him I wanted my old tractor back and he said you got it. it Bring back some memories, you know. It's just, we ran it in the roller beater when I had it. And uh, yeah, like I said, it would just be back some memories. It was just kind of fun. The employees we have, uh, the sacrifice they give, um, the, t the time away from their families. Without the good, dedicated people we have, 
none of this would matter. None of it would be possible to do. Goodaitis Family Farm. It's Goodaitis Family Farm. The family is intentionally first. And I know Lee and I lose focus on that a lot, and that's hard. Um, the size of our farm has, has given us uh, a lot of opportunities. It's also de deprived us a lot. We've had to make a lot of sacrifices. Farming isn't easy, it never will be. There's a reason less than 2% of the population does it. You know, we're very proud to have our, our family backing us up and, you know, ultimately it's what we're, we're trying to make a living. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're working more than we're living, but if you like it, it's not so bad. I've always said, uh, I think we have more fun than we do work here. And uh, anybody in their life, stop and think about yourself. When you're having fun, are you really working? And uh, if you can have fun and call it work and get paid to do it, it just makes everything happen better. Hey Jeff, I'm on uh, 11 going into Kennedy, so I just uh, go south from Kennedy, down the drain. Well, if you're on 7 going into Kennedy, when you get to 75, you can get a right and go south to Donaldson, and then take a right and go back to Dayton. Okay, thank you sir. Hey, go away and go empty all your man over to the wind and the short out, you want know, over the over half hole. Thank you, 23, go left. Hey, 23, can you turn left? Turn left? Thank you, if you're gonna exit the field, second so audio. Jeremy, move to the uh, west or to your right there, Jeremy. Go down to the harvester to the other opening. Please, thank you. Roy, when you're empty, also go uh, take a right, head down to that other harvester to the other opening, thanks. We were just went through that ditch on the north end and it was spinning like hell in there, so watch for the harvesters. And for don't drop the harvesters down on that ditch there, she's juicy. Don't put any slop or slime or juice in the harvester. You'll be all you won't be clean anymore. There's another approach in the middle of the field on the west side here at least. Yeah, have to flag it in the corner if you don't want nobody to use it because they're using it. Yeah, that's right. We're moving something there to block it. I said the northwest corner, not the middle on the left side. The northwest corner only, you can get in and out by the tile pump. Robert 26, your work lights behind your cab are on. Robert 26, work lights are now off. Thank you. So, Candy, he just said the northwest corner of the field. So, you're going south. You need to turn around again. 
time for. Give Rose or maybe it's gonna be back up. Well, you should be up over. He's gonna, but well, he's getting in the other harvester when it starts, so. He'll be up and running shortly. You can jump over for now. Truck drivers, truck drivers. The uh, foreman at American Crystal just called me from the Kennedy Pilot and the Humboldt Pilot. And he said, you guys are all doing a really nice job and being nice and courteous. So thank you for that. Keep up the good work. 10-4. 